Hi everyone. Thanks for joining with us in yet another OWASP Project Spotlight series. So this one project that we are going to cover today is very, very interesting. Uh, why? Because a lot of people have been asking that, is there something or is there any project which OWASP has, which, uh, uh, which we can actually showcase in a form of a game? Because gamifying is something which stacks with us. Like for me, I remember things if there's someone who can make it like a puzzle or make it like a game. And similarly for kids, it's, it's easy for them to remember if it's a game. So Cornucopia is one project which is like a game, but I would let the supporters and the leaders speak more about the project. So today we have Colin Watson and Grant Ongers with me. So uh, just quickly, uh, we're, we're gonna be talking about threat modeling. Uh, using um, OWASP Cornucopia. Threat modeling being uh, a topic that almost every security architect loves to get his hands dirty with um, and that developers don't understand at all and tend to shy away from. Um, very quickly, very busy slide with a bunch of information on about me. Um, I, I, I love the community. Uh, that's the main takeaway from there. Also how to get hold of me. Uh, business stuff at Secure Delivery, but mostly OWASP stuff. At yes, and I'm, um, uh, I'm I'm less involved with AppSep at the moment because I'm doing a PhD at Newcastle University in uh, the UK. Uh, but I've contributed to quite a lot of different OWASP projects in the past, and uh, but Cornucopia was one of the ones I started myself. Cornucopia is a phenomenal project. It is it is taking all of the the great things, building on the on the the. the shoulders of the giants uh, with regards to things like uh, SCP, ASVS, App Sensor, um, building on things like safe code, uh, the MITRE's common attack pattern enumeration classification. Um, and it, it allows you to take those really big, chunky, complex security focused projects and bite size them down for developers to consume, for them to understand. Um, the process of playing a game is pretty easy because it is a game. But Nana mentioned that earlier, it is definitely a game. Um, the process of playing the game, well, you start off with some things. You start off with some architectural designs, some data flow diagrams, but don't get too hung up on that, right? Because they probably are not accurate. Um, their documentation, they're probably behind the thinking of the lead dev anyway, or he's just started putting them together and he hasn't actually thought them through completely. It's fine. Start with something. Uh, you'll end up with something like this. And this is essentially the, the cornucopia score sheet. This score sheet serves two purposes. Uh, the first is it's a great way to keep track of score. That's the primary purpose of it, after all. The second thing it does is it gives us a list of backlog items that we want to include, um, either uh, non-functional acceptance criteria or whole stories that we want to create based on whatever the discussions were. As a side effect, um, this acts as a really nice a number of the teams that I've done it with, a number of the companies that I've done it with. This acts as a really nice proof that we've done threat modeling uh, artifact that they can go and scan in and store in a database somewhere. And when they get audited down the line or uh, when they're going through you know, recertification by SOTU or uh, SOC2, they can pull this out and say, look, we did threat modeling, here are the stories. And then look in JIRA, these are the stories that were completed. The bigger outcomes is this that you have the user stories, you have the compliance aspect of it. Um, how do we play the game? Well, we have a deck of cards and I have many, many, many versions of that deck of cards here, but this is, this is the stock standard one. This is the one that if you're keen to get a hold of a, a, an OWASP deck, this is the one you can go and reach out to us on the website for. I'll make sure that I get your copy. I printed a bunch of these a while ago. Um, the cards themselves cover various suites. So Colin, do you want to run through them? I'll, I'll pull them up on the screen here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we, we uh, when I was drafting these, we had a sort of uh, list from the um, OWASP, the former OWASP Secure Coding Practices Checklist. And what I tried to do was to group things together into um, themes rather than sort of vulnerability based things so uh, one of the natural uh, suits that came out was authentication and the nice thing about authentication is that kind of maps back to if you're doing threat modeling already 
it's stride it's the spoofing and repudiation aspect of stride and then of course we were uh, familiar uh, there was another whole chunk to do with authorization so there's you know if you have a look through things like the OWASP testing guide and uh, uh, any sort of guides to secure coding so um, authentication authorization two large chunks of uh, um, issues that we that we we tend to find uh, uh, concerns with when uh, when doing development work so um, they, 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 these were the sort of two foundational uh, suit uh, suits in the in the deck and pretty much these two suits are used almost all the time. Um, it's one of these two areas that that's that's where your weakness is going to end up lying. That kind of ties back to elevation of privilege uh, in Stride if you're if you're doing Stride stuff. Yeah, and then because this card deck was built predominantly for web applications, uh, that's how it started. I was particularly interested in uh, teams that are working on uh, e-commerce websites because they were partially having to do things because of PCI DSS. Um, so session management, um, how that is handled in, in web applications, there's a whole raft of um, matters that we need to concern ourselves with there. And then we have data validation. Yeah, so of course, um, uh, fundamental to a, a, a lot of these things is, um, what's coming and going through the system. Uh, so lots of uh, matters to how you actually um, um, <clears throat> check, format, read, access data. And, and if you look at the OS top 10, which unfortunately over the last, you know, eon hasn't changed all that much, uh, you'll see that data validation. If you did data validation properly, you could avoid most of the OS top 10 today. Um, of course, this also balances with uh, tampering in Stride. And of course, there was a whole range of uh, things that were very specific to uh, sort of uh, crypt cryptography, um, which ended up in another suit on its own. And it helps combat the, uh, the information disclosure aspect in Stride. So that gives us the first five decks. Um, and I, I refer to this very often when I talk about cornucopia as the OWASP top five. Um, the OWASP top five things that you should, when you hear these words, alarm bell should ring, I need to think about security when you're talking of those five areas. Um, but there's a sixth suit there. Um, and that sixth suit, well, that's... Cornucopia. So this this was, this was the, there were a number of things that didn't really fit into the other five, uh, the, the, the main five. So we just grouped together and used the term cornucopia, which of course was the name for the, the whole uh, deck as well. Everything else. That covers all of the things. So what does gameplay actually look like? Um, it's nine steps, really nine steps to get through a game um, or get through a round of a game. Uh, it's probably more accurate. Um, and these steps are pre-sorting. When I say pre-sorting, the deck contains 80 cards. Um, you may not need all 80 cards every time you play the game. So ways to shorten the game time is to remove some of those cards. If you're dealing with a function or a feature that doesn't have sessions, remove session management. If you're dealing with a feature that is unauthenticated, get rid of authentication. Um, then you deal the cards out. You want to take the rest of the deck, whatever is staying in the deck, you want to take that and distribute it to everyone. All the cards gone, so that everyone's in, got cards in their hands. And then you play around. You look at the application that you're going to be describing. Really? You're going to be, um, uh, you're going to look at the app, you're going to look at the cards in your hand, and you're going to find a card that matches something that you're doing with this app. Um, the next step is to describe your attack. You're going to try and convince people in the step following that, that your attack that you've just described is entirely possible, that you could make this attack work against this application. Bear in mind, your fellow players are playing against you, so they're going to argue that it's not possible because otherwise you're going to get a point. When you've convinced them, give yourself a point. Usually uh, Scrum Masters or um, the person who acts in that role, that facilitating role within a team, they tend to do a lot of the scorekeeping in my experience, Colin. I don't know if that's the experience you've seen as well. Yeah. They yeah, also tend to adjudicate the, 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 the whether the, this is possible or not. 
generally i say err on the side of caution so if you think it might be and you're not sure then your action item is going to be we should check that and you give the point yeah try not to throw anything away as, as you go on but it's, it's sort of better just to document it and then and carry on as it were to keep keep, keep the um, um keep going Momentum. as it were yeah um and then you follow suit so the next person in line plays a card in that same suit and they try and play a higher card in that suit because at the end of a round the first card played determines the winning suit of the round the card that has the highest in that suit or if a trump is played it could be a trump will win the round so you score a point for a valid attack and you score a point for having the most dangerous attack i guess you could really describe it as uh, in that type for that round um the winner is the person who has the most points when all the cards are played or when you've run out of time because you time boxed it um there should be a prize it's a game i i find that uh encouraging people to i don't know a nice shiny gold star or uh you get uh, to leave early on friday or uh you know the product owner buys cake uh because you're the awesome person and everybody gets to congratulate you but most importantly is step nine you now have this filled out sheet of scores with very briefly little stories and little notes to yourself. Those need to go and put it be put into your backlog. And they need to be a decision needs to be made by the product owner as to which ones are going to be pulled into the sprint and which ones are critical for that story that they're trying to uh, get out the door. Uh, the first thing is use the decks. Don't just take the deck and deal down through the deck as a boring exercise. Is this card valid? Everyone? Yeah? No? Okay, we'll throw it away. Is this one valid? A number of teams that I've worked with that I taught to play the game tried doing that and it it doesn't work because it's not gamification anymore. It just becomes a checklist. Um, change up the game. As I said, not all of the features, uh, not all of the, the cards, not all the five or six areas need to be included as part of your, your game. In fact, uh, Colin's suggestion for first-time gamers is to remove all of the wild card type things. So take the cornucopia trump suite out, take the aces out because the aces are, are trumps. Um, it, it's, it makes the game simple uh, to start with. And it's not always necessary to use all the cards. Also, and this is controversial, not all features need to be threat modeled. So pick the ones that you have those warning bells for the top five on. Use the systems that you have. Right now we're all remote, uh, that makes things complicated. As I said, if you go to the Cornucopia website, uh, we have a number of decks available. Reach out to us and I'll get you a deck sent over. Like everything What's else up? with the WASP, all the source files are available as well. So you can exactly. print your own if you want or convert it into some other, some other um, media. Exactly. And that actually brings us to, to like the, the next steps for the project. Um, We've, we started doing some automated builds. Uh, the original versions of the cards were uh, Word documents, um, which meant that you needed to have Word in order to make changes to them. Uh, it also makes tweaking language slightly more complicated uh, because there's formatting to, to be concerned with as well. Um, the new versions, the more Git-friendly versions are YAML files. Uh, we've already created the first versions, the, the, the two point, uh, 1.2, versions 1.2 star versions of uh, cornucopia including the translations have been done um, there are some builds now that will trigger and output the H an html version and they'll output uh indesign versions which is uh, thanks to uh was it blackfoot who originally did that column uh yes it was a company i did some work for they they, they, they originally got the cards uh, created in um um sort of uh, print ready uh, files and uh, so we've built on that subsequently and updated those and to, to kept everything available so there is an indesign version so you can take it and have it professionally printed if you wanted to have you know 100 copies printed for all the teams in your organization feel free to go ahead and do that um, there's also a markdown version and pdf versions uh, pdf versions if you're printing them at home what do we still want to do well i'd like to have a mobile app um, and I've started some work on that. There's a little bit of code in, in the repo around that, mostly tests because I'm not a developer. So I start with testing because that way I can go and change things and break things until I'm sure that it works. But a mobile app would be great. One where you could just 
I mean, physical decks are great, they're cool. I never want them to go away, but we're not in the same physical spaces at the moment. And the pandemic has changed the way that we work, the way that we think about working. Um, teams are distributed across the world, right? There's, I work with teams in India at the moment. I'm unlikely to ever be in the same room with, uh, as them, at least not till the pandemic is over. And we want to improve the content. Cornucopia, as I said in the beginning, relies very heavily on the great projects that we have within OWASP. Um, and now that we build them from source, we'd like to be able to update mappings for those projects on a regular basis and make them more interactive. Like, for example, being able directly to link from the PDF version or the, uh, the uh, HTML version to that specific point in the ASVS that we we're talking about. And as you can see there, uh, the mappings, the e-commerce mappings, uh, 1.2 YAML file is a separate thing. So we can keep those, those details separate. Um, we also want to plug it into other projects. Uh, one of the projects that reached out to Colin recently was the um, logging benchmark project. Uh, where a uh, the project lead wanted to actually create a, a logging version of Cornucopia, but ideally this would just be another item, right? So when you're logging for authentication, these are this is where you're going to get the details on that. So we'd like to add it as another one of the links. Um, mostly, please get involved. Jump out. Those are the uh, the project project page on OWASP. That's the GitHub location. Go clone the repo. Go play with stuff. Go laugh at my code. Uh, correct it. So a bit of pull request, please. Um, and if there's other areas that you'd like us to expand Cornucopia into, if you have some of these projects that you'd like to, or these parts that we're trying to do that you'd like to get involved in, please reach out and do that. And I guess that's that's us. Yep, I think there's one Thank one fi so one final thing I would just like to like to add is that the the game itself was inspired by uh, Microsoft's uh, threat. Uh, um, elevation. elevation of Pri Privilege card game uh, by Adam yeah. Shostak. Um, but I wanted to develop something that was uh, more suitable for uh, web developers, web application development in particular. Uh, but fundamentally, the whole concept and the idea was was based on um, Adam Shostak's work. And that's uh, mentioned in the license included in the files. Um, Elevation of Privilege itself was released open source by Microsoft, which was very kind of them. And at some point, it, it appears to have been a, an OWASP project as well, because it's got the OWASP branding on the on, this, on the copy that I have. Um, yeah, and Adam is Adam is a a fan of of what we're doing with Cornucopia because it is the other side of it, right? Uh, EOP covers security from the security point of view; it's looking at the threats, um, and Cornucopia covers the defense side, it covers the build property side. Um, Incredible. Thank you so much to both of you. It was amazing. Absolutely a pleasure, Vimana. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon again with Thank many you. more projects.